Hi everyone. The next topic is assisted reproductive technology. So, assisted reproductive technologies are useful for the infertile couples to have their own child. So, that is the assisted reproductive technology, which is being generally helping the various of the infertile couples throughout the world to have their own child. And apart from that, in India, there are various of uh, the emotional or social belief that the children which are being born by these technologies are not of their own. That is the thinking which has been seen or it is being observed in case of the India. Although uh, in the earlier days, that is during the 1970s or 80s, okay, when the techniques were being initially developed. So at that time, there was a huge problem associated where the couples didn't want to have the children by using this technology. But nowadays, everywhere, it may be a small uh, a place or it may be a city. So there you can find the hospitals, which are generally the infertility clinics, where generally these techniques are being used to uh, make the infertile couples to have their children. So let's get into the details of what are these technologies, how they are being done and uh, to whom these uh, technologies can be uh, used or they are beneficial. So among the uh, technologies, the first one is called as in vitro fertilization or uh, embryo transfer. So in short, it is called as IVFET. And this particular technique, in vitro fertilization embryo transfer is being regarded as a test tube baby technique. Why it is being called? That we will discuss in detail now. So this particular technique, for the first time, it was being developed by the British physiologist, namely Dr. Patrick Steptoe and Dr. Robert Edwards. So these were the two doctors who made this particular technique to become successful. And uh, by using this particular technique, uh, there was the first world's uh, test tube baby who was born born named as Louis Joy Brown uh, in the July 25th, 1978. And uh, Louis Joy Brown is uh, the daughter who is being born to that of the Leslie Brown and uh, Gilbert Brown. So these Leslie Brown and Gilbert Brown are the parents of the Louis John Joy Brown. And Louis Joy Brown is being regarded as the world's first test tube baby which was being developed by Stepto as well as Edwards. Thereafter is uh, in India, the first test tube baby uh, was being named as Durga and she was born on October 3rd, 1978. And here the entire effort was being done by Dr. Shubash Mukhyapadhyay, basically a uh, West Bengal doctor. And uh, it was being, according to Indian Medical Association, it was being said to be an illegal uh, uh, technique which was being developed. So thereby, the Durga who was being born in the year, in the same year, 1978, so she was being regarded as illegal. And later, the name of this Durga was being changed into the Kanapriya Agarwal. So that is why uh, she is famously now known as earlier Durga, but now she is known as Kanapriya Agarwal. And uh, the first legalized uh, test tube baby uh, was born in the year 1986 on August 6th. And name is Kumari Harsha. And uh, it was being the entire effort by Dr. Indira Hinduja, who is a famous uh, gynecologist and obstetrician, uh, who is working in uh, the KM Hospitals, Mumbai, King Edward Hospitals, uh, Mumbai. She is working over there. And... Uh, this is regarding the information about uh, who is the first test tube baby in the world and uh, in India. So in India, the first legalized test tube baby is uh, Harsha by the doctor Indira Hinduja. What is being done and to whom this particular technique is being employed? So in vitro fertilization is a technique or technology which is being done to that of the female who is uh, having blocked fallopian tubes. So blocked fallopian tubes may be due to the growth of uh, the polyps or it may be uh, fibroids. So in such cases, when both the fallopian tubes are being blocked, 
so thereafter the uh, female is unaware of that and uh, they think that there is a problem associated with them and thereafter they are unable to get or produce uh, the child so in such females ivf et is being done now how it is being done so firstly to that female what they do is they give uh, an uh, injection which is of uh, the gonadotropin injections are being introduced and uh, that is with the a uh, little higher dosage that injection is been introduced into her body thereafter uh, under the influence of this gnrh the fsh activity as well as the lh activity will increase and from her ovary around 3 uh, to 4 eggs are being produced 3 to 4 eggs are being ovulated and these eggs will be retained in that of the fallopian tube because the female is having the blockage so once after the 3 to 4 eggs are being ovulated thereafter a minor operation an incision is being made into that of uh, the lower abdomen where the location of the fallopian tube can be seen so in such tube i mean in such part an incision is being made and uh, these 3 to 4 eggs unfertilized eggs are being taken out now these 3 to 4 eggs are being placed into a petri dish basically where this petri dish consists of the medium nutrient mediums which are similar to that of uh, the conditions which are being seen in that of the fallopian tube so that uh, where the eggs may not feel that they are there in the in vitro conditions so they feel like that there is a hostile environment for them and uh, they start uh, being healthy okay so thereafter once the eggs are being placed into the petri dish from the husband of that female who has a blocked fallopian tube from her husband the semen uh, semen is being collected so once after the semen is being collected so that semen is being uh, thoroughly washed where there is a removal of uh, the abnormal sperms or the proteins or the prostaglandins which are being present in that of the semen so thereafter around uh, 50000s of the healthy motile sperms are being taken and these uh, healthy sperms are being introduced into the petri dish where it consists of the eggs so there the sperms will come in contact with that of the eggs and thereafter the fertilization takes place so that is the reason the name is being given as in vitro which means which occurs outside the body so fertilization is taking place in the petri dish thereby the name in vitro fertilization so that is how the ivf et is being done now once after the fertilization takes place the zygote is being formed now there for example 3 to 4 eggs means 3 to 4 zygotes are being introduced now these 3 to 4 zygotes can be used in 3 to 4 the other females or uh, one particular egg fertilized egg so that can be introduced into that female who is having the blocked fallopian tube usually a single it is being introduced if 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 the zygote is introduced or if it is the embryo which is having less than 8 blastomeres if it is being introduced into the fallopian tube then that is the technology that is called as zygote intra fallopian transfer or commonly you can call it as zift okay so where there is introduction of zygote or the embryo which has less than 8 blastomeres means zygote intra fallopian transfer occurs only after the technique that is ivf which means the fertilized egg which is there which has occurred in in vitro condition so that is being taken that is being collected and that is being introduced into the female so that is uh, zift or else or else if after fertilization if uh, the i mean uh, the embryo has reached more than 8 blastomeres in such case okay so that has been directly transferred into the uterus so the process of implantation will occur if it is less than 8 blastomeres so generally under the normal conditions what we know is uh, once after the fertilization takes place on the 7th day the implantation occurs okay so 
if it is less than 8 blastom years, it has been introduced into the fallopian tube. Thereafter, the fertilized egg reaches to that of the uterus and thereafter it gets uh, implanted. Or else, if the embryo has crossed over more than 8 blastom years, then it is being directly transferred into the uterus. So that technique uh, is called as intrauterine transfer, which means the fertilized, the embryo which is there, which is more than 8 blastom year, so that is introduced into the uterus. So that is IUT. So these both the techniques, okay, involves where the fertilization generally occurs in vitro. Okay, so that is very important for your needs. Next is an another technique that is called as gamete intrafallopian transfer. So as the name itself will tell you that the gamete is being introduced into the fallopian tube. And this particular technique is uh, known commonly as a gift. And this gift is uh, expensive and it is invasive than that of the in, in vitro fertilization. Because IVFET, which is a common mode of the common mode to the couples, infertile couples to have the children, has a success rate around 20 to 25 percent. And it has been believed that gift is much more expensive, I mean, uh, uh, it is much more expensive than IVF, but uh, it gives a guaranteed results, like around 25 to 30 percent is the success rate of the gift. And this uh, uh, technolo technology or technique was being developed by Ash and uh, his colleagues in the year 1984. And what is being done here is uh, both the sperm that is the sperm from that of the husband. So that is being collected and unfertilized oocyte. So these unfertilized oocyte are taken from a own donor. Why? Why? Because the female who wants to uh, undergo this uh, gift uh, pro technique. So the, that female is uh, suffering from suffering from the problem which is associated with the, with the ovary where she is unable to produce a, a single ova. So when both the ovaries are being not able to produce a single ova to such females, this gift is being done. Which means the sperm of her husband and the unfertilized oocyte or the ova is being collected from the donor and uh, these both are being placed in the plastic container that is what we commonly say it as a catheter or by using a laparoscopic method these gametes both the gametes are being transferred into the fallopian tube so when both the gametes are being introduced at a particular place that is especially in the distal part of the fallopian tube so there the gametes are being freed so the sperm as well as the ova will come in contact and thereafter the fertilization takes place and once the fertilization takes place, thereafter this fertilized egg will reach to that of the uterus and further the implantation occurs. So here in the gift, what you have to remember is fertilization is occurring in vivo, which means inside the body. So as I said, an in vitro fertilization is being done to a female who is having the tubal blockage. First thing. In the gamete intrafallopian transfer, it is being conducted to that of the female who is unable to produce a single ova. Okay, so that is gift. Next after is artificial insemination. So this artificial insemination is being uh, a technique for that of the males especially, where the male is uh, unable to, okay, unable to uh, have the sperm, the normal sperm count in his uh, semen, which means he may be possibly, he may be a uh, drunkard who is being consuming al alcohol for many number of years. So in such cases, oligospermia will occur. So as we have discussed in the earlier video. So if he is suffering from oligospermia, where the sperm count is uh, less than 60 millions in 1 ml of the semen. So that individual is oligospermic. So in such individuals or if the person is suffering from the impotency where this is also what we have discussed that is impotency refers to failure of erection of the penis. 
prior to that of the sexual intercourse in such individuals okay who are unable to uh, ejaculate or release their semen into their females reproductive system to such female males artificial insemination is being done so what is being done here is the semen or the sperms are being collected either from the husband if possibly how it is possible because there are various of the drugs which can be given to that of these individuals these males who are suffering or who are from who are suffering from impotency certain drugs are given for that particular period of time the penis may get erected okay so during that time the semen is being collected from them or else if that is not being possible then there are the donors as we have the ovum donors of females okay the males are also there from where the uh, sperms are being healthy sperms are being collected and once uh, the semen or the sperms are being collected from a healthy donor it is being thoroughly used and it is being washed and after washed as i said the proteins or the prostaglandins which are there so those are being removed and these healthy fertile sperms are being introduced into the vagina of the wife or the female okay whose husband is suffering from impotency so that is artificial insemination okay so artificial insemination is being done to i mean it is being conducted for the males who are suffering from impotency or oligospermia where the semen or the sperms are introduced into vagina then it is artificial insemination a similar technique is being done where the semen or the sperms are collected from either from the husband or the donor but here there is introduction of this sperm or semen is into the uterus then it becomes a intrauterine insemination in both the cases female or the wife is normal she is producing a normal healthy ova no fallopian tube blockage uh, there is no infection to the uterus everything female is healthy and normal but the problem is associated with the, the males so in that cases either ai or iut intrauterine insemination is being done next is intracytoplasmic sperm injection so this is a a technology which was being developed in the year 1992 in belgium by uh, van stertegem and his colleagues so this is much more advanced technique which is being done so what is being in case of the intracytoplasmic sperm injection so the name you can see intra means within cytoplasm of the egg the sperm is being injected which means here in this technique a normal healthy single sperm is being taken and thereafter by using a, uh what we say micro pipettes are being there where we can collect only a single sperm and uh, by taking that single sperm it is being introduced into uh, the cytoplasm of the unfertilized egg so the females are the couples who have undergone Uh, around 2 to 3 times of ivf technique also and in such cases they are unable to have their children in such cases what they generally do is they take a single sperm uh, that is from the husband and uh, ova from the wife and thereafter uh, by puncturing the zona pellucida of uh, the ova the sperm is being introduced directly into the cytoplasm of the healthy egg which is unfertilized so when the sperm is we are doing it okay we are doing it purposefully so where the sperm is being directly introduced into the cytoplasm which means fertilization is taking place 100% okay so the here here also in case of icsi fertilization is occurring in vitro in artificial insemination or intrauterine insemination here the fertilization is taking place inside the female reproductive system which means it is in vivo right and uh, this icsi is being done to a person who is suffering from oligospermia where he is 60 or 60 millions where the sperm count is less than 60 millions in 1 ml of the semen so from that only one single sperm is being collected 
from that individual who is suffering from algaspermia okay and uh, it is being introduced into the ova or else uh, if a person is suffering from azoospermia then the sperms are being collected from other individuals like uh, sperm donors and uh, anti sperm antibodies if they are being developed in case of the males in such cases also the sperms are being collected from the donors and they are being introduced into the ova of the healthy wife so that can be done intra cytoplasmic sperm injection which is the advanced uh, technology in case of the assisted reproductive technology now apart from all these this is being commonly done in case of uh, the couples in between the couples there is a mutual agreement which is being done and based on that uh, these technologies can be done whereas the surrogate pregnancy which is there so this is being a technique which is being involved in developing the embryo the developing embryo which is there so that is being implanted into the uterus of an another female which means let us take an example uh, the husband and wife okay if a wife has been met with an uh, a sexually transmitted disease with or with an infection where her entire uterus is being infected by that particular pathogen so in such case the entire entire uterus has to be removed because it is being highly infected if it is not being removed then the infection may enter deep into the female reproductive system and it may directly invade to that of uh, the ovaries also so in such females the uterus who doesn't have the uterus where they have undergone the hysterectomy so they lack the implantation site which means she is able to produce a healthy ova they, she doesn't have any fallopian tube blockage but she does not have the implantation site okay so from uh, that female the ova is being collected and from her husband the sperm is being collected and thereafter both are being uh, fertilized in in vitro condition which means we are doing with the uh, ivf technique and once the fertilized product is ready that is a zygote or an embryo less than 8 blastomeres so that is being introduced into into the uterus of another female that is all by looking after when the ovulation has occurred in another female by looking after all those this technique is being done so that is what we call it as surrogate pregnancy now the female who has received that zygote of the other couple so she has to take care and she has to completely take care of that developing embryo or the fetus up to 9 months and once after uh, the parturition so that uh, young one or the fetus has to be given to that of the couples and uh, technique or technology which is being nowadays used also so that is called as surrogate pregnancy so these are the various of the assisted reproductive technologies which are being conducted worldwide as well as in india also it has been nowadays a very common technique without having any ethical issues or uh, the social uh, uh, problems whatever associated so nowadays everything is normal and everyone is going for this kind of technologies if and only if if they are unable to produce the normal uh, children so this is a r t s